Section 228 is an important section for us. This section talks about a situation where you have to calculate a special recoupment if you get rid of stock, but not in the ordinary course of business. So for example, if I, the idea behind trading stock is that I buy it, or I make it myself, and then I sell it. Make it, or buy it, and sell it. Buy it, and sell it, buy it, and sell it. But, what happens if I don't sell it? What happens if I buy it, and then I give it to my shareholder as a dividend in specie? Or I buy it, and then I decide to donate it to a school, or to donate it to a person? Or I buy my trading stock and then I decide now I'm going to use it as an asset instead. All of those situations, we've had a situation where I've had trading stock and then I get rid of it as trading stock. So I'm not going to be, it's not going to be trading stock for me either, anymore, either because I've given it away or because I'm using it as an asset. And in all of those cases, there's a recoupment. Why would that be the case? Because when I bought this, I get a deduction. And if it's opening stock, I also get a deduction. Now, what is the risk here? Let's say I, let me ask you the following. I'm a company, X Limited, and X Limited wants to go and it wants to donate Coca-Cola to a school sport event. Okay, so school has a sport event, and X Limited says, let's give them Coca-Cola. So they want to make a donation. They don't make Coca-Cola themselves. If they now go and they buy Coke for, let's say, 100,000 rand, so it's a lot of Coke, they go and they get a 100,000 rand deduction. If, right. Now, actually, before I do it, let me ask you. If you buy Coke in this case, can you get a deduction for it? No. Why? Because it's not in the production of income. We are buying Coca-Cola in order to donate it to someone. And that's not business. Now, this is what the problem is. What if a company then buys Coca-Cola? What if this is, let's say, pick and pay? So that's a supermarket. They buy Coca-Cola to sell to their customers. So now they go and they decide, I want to donate Coke. So they would have claimed 100,000 rands as a deduction. Can you see the ris risk here? The previous guy couldn't claim it as a deduction because it wasn't used in the production of income. But Pick and Pay says, yes, it is in the production of income, it's trading stock. And then later they decide to get rid of it. So then you'll have a situation where you could claim a deduction for something that's not in production of income. And that is why we need to add an amount back. So guys, please also note here, I just want you to see, if you sell stock at least in its market value, that is fine if it's a normal sale that's going on. So you're saying it's an end of season sale and we want to do it. That's fine. But the question that you should be looking out for is, will this selling at least in market value surprise an ordinary businessman? So what does that mean? It means if I sell something to someone and I charge them a special rate, which is not available to anybody else, then that would be a surprise to an ordinary businessman. And that is a problem for us. Okay, so please just be aware of that. That is what I'm talking about there. You may sell things at less than market value if it's a sale going on. But if it's a special deal you make with someone, that is a problem. Now, in all of these situations, guys, like I've said, so in this Coca-Cola case, what you'll do is there will be a recoupment that you will add to your RANDS column. Now, what I want you to see is that amount over there you can also claim as a deduction if you are using this in the production of income. Now, for example, when Pick and Pay donates this Coca-Cola to a sport event, that is not in the production of income, so they will have this recoupment and nothing else. But, let's say Pick and Pay says we will going to give 100,000 rands Coca-Cola to a sport event, but it's not a donation. You need to advertise, put up signs everywhere saying, thank you Pick and Pay, please go to Pick and Pay and buy their things, they're the best. Then it's a marketing expense. Then I will have the recoupment, but I will also be allowed to claim that same amount as a marketing expense. So that the net effect there is null. So why would that be the case? Because if I had gone out and purchased Coca-Cola, Specifically to give for marketing from the start, I would have spent 100,000 Rand. So now I get 100,000 Rand deduction. I will add an amount and deduct the same amount. So my net effect is still 100,000 Rand deduction, which is the same deduction I would have got if I just spent 100,000 Rand on marketing. So that is how this section is written to do that. So guys, here are the rules. And this is, 
the entire section summarized. This is what I want you to remember. So, there are three situations. And the most important ones for you are number two and three. Okay, number one is if the taxpayer takes the trading stock for private use, then the amount of the recoupment will be the cost of the trading stock. Now guys, what is important for you to understand here, and I've seen questions sometimes in the past making mistakes here, this is only available for natural persons. You have to look at the owner of the stock. Is that a natural person? So, if Mr. X is the owner of a business, and he takes stock for himself, he will be taxed on the cost of it because he's a natural person. However, if X Limited gives stocks to Mr. A and says to Mr. A, you can go and use it for private use. This section is not applicable because X Limited is not a natural person. X Limited is the owner of the stock. X Limited can't go home. So let's say it's pick and pay is X Limited. Pick and pay can't go home to Mrs. Pick and pay and the little kids pick and pay. It's not a natural person. Right, so first one, only applicable to natural persons. Next one, if you make a donation to a public benefit organization, plus you get a section 18A certificate. So it must be a proper donation to a public benefit organization. Then the recoupment amount is whatever you've deducted for the stock in the current year. Now remember, you have two things. It's either opening stock or purchases. Whatever amount you claim as a deduction for that stock, that you just add back. And in any other situation, so any donation to not a PBO, any situation where you want to use something for marketing, where you want to convert something into stock, so the majority of situations, the recoupment is the market value of the stock. So guys, let's just go and find this now on the act. This is what you're going to come back to. I want you to just, before I move on, just pay attention to the references, section 22A, 8A, section 22A, capital A, section 22A, capital C, section 28B, section 28B, B, right. So see those, because I'm going to talk about them now. So it says, if doing any year of assessment, first up, what I want you to see what they do, is they are talking about these situations here. If you've done any of these things, a taxpayer has applied trading stock to his private domestic use, there you can see, or if it's a donation of trading stock. So they're talking about these first two situations, one and two. Although they're talking about donation to PBO and other donations, or all donations, right? Then, or B, if any taxpayer has applied trading stock for making a donation, a taxpayer has disposed of trading stock other than in the ordinary course of his trade for consideration of less than market value. So that's the example where I said if you sell something at a discount to someone and it's not a normal sale, or you've taken trading stock and it's given as a distribution in specie to someone. So you've given it to someone as a dividend in specie. Or you've applied the stock for any other purpose other than the disposal thereof in the ordinary course of this trade. So for example, if you're using it for marketing or if you, um, any other reason not what they say, which you are using for trade, see what they're saying? You're using it in your trade, but not for disposal. So if you're going to use it, but not dispose of it. Or assets which were held as trading stock, which just ceased to be held as trading stock. So this will be, for example, trading stock converted into an asset. Right, and the cost price of such trading stock has been taken into account in determining the taxable income for any year of assessment. So what they're saying is, if you claim a deduction for it, then the taxpayer shall be deemed to have recovered or recouped. Right, here we go. So it says, A, what is the amount that we're going to recover? They say, where such trading stock has been applied in a manner as contemplated in paragraph A. Right, paragraph A that amount, and this is where you've used it for private or domestic use, or you've made a donation of trading stock. Then they tell you it will be an amount equal to the cost price that will be added. And if you don't know what the cost price is, then it will be market value, okay, but you should know. B, 
Where such trading stock has been applied, disposed of, or distributed in a manner contemplated in paragraph B. So this is now all of these other situations. Right? Then you must add the market value of such trading stock. So they are referring to this rule over here. Sorry, let's just clean up here. They are referring to this rule over here. Or C. So B said otherwise than in the manner contemplated in paragraph C. So they said excluding paragraph C. So what does paragraph C say? It says paragraph C is where it says trading stock has been applied for the purpose of making a donation in which section 18A apply. Then the amount that you can must add is an amount equal to the amount which is taken into account in respect of the value of that trading stock. So what are they saying here? They're saying if you make a donation to a public benefit organization, you must use the amount which you claimed as a deduction for opening stock or purchases. Right, and that shall be included in your income, all of these amounts. Provided, then it's a proviso, that such trading stock was so displayed or disposed or distributed. All right, sorry guys, it's actually starts here. Provided that we, an asset consisting of trading stock, so applied is used or consumed by the taxpayer in carrying on his trade, the amount included in his income under this subsection shall for the purpose of this act be deemed to be expenditure incurred. So what are they talking about? They, they're using this example that I used where I said, if the company goes and they donate 100,000 rands of stock, and they're doing it for marketing purposes, you will recoup the market value, and then you can claim a deduction for it. Why can you claim a deduction? Because you're using it in the production of income. So that is what they're saying here. They say, the amount that you have added to taxable income, the amount that you've included in this income, is treated as the amount incurred as cost. So that is why I say to you, the amount that you've added it's the same amount as deducted. That is what they're talking about there. Right? They say if the provisions of paragraph B2 apply, and any consideration contemplated in that paragraph has been received by accrued to the taxpayer, the amount included in his income shall be reduced by such consideration. So what's paragraph B2? Paragraph B2 is this one here, where they say, okay, let's actually clean it up where they say B2, where the taxpayer has disposed of stock other than the ordinary course of his trade. So this is where you've sold it at less than market value. So what must, what must you include then if you sold it less than market value? You must include the market value of such trading stock. So what does this section talk about? It says you must deduct the amount of the consideration. So basically what it means is the following. Let's say the market value of stock is 100,000 rands, but you sold it for 20,000 rands. If you now do the tax, you will say sale 20,000 rands. Then you will apply the section 22.8 because you've sold it less than market value. And they say it is the market value minus the amount that you must include. So that is what they're telling us here in paragraph B. You must reduce it by the consideration. There's the consideration. That's 20,000 rands. So the total that you can get taxed on then is the 100,000 rands. C, not in your syllabus, that has to do with farming. D, they tell you if such trading stock consists of assets in respect of which any amount received or accrued from the disposal will be included in the gross income of the taxpayer in terms of paragraph JA, then para the provisions of paragraph B4 shall not apply. Paragraph B4 is this last one where they tell you if you've used the asset in any way um, not in terms of the disposal there of an the ordinary court of business. So they're saying if you haven't sold it. Now what I want you to see here, paragraph JA. Paragraph JA of the gross income definition only applies if you manufacture your own stock. Okay, so what are we talking about there? We'll see that in a few seconds. So guys, here are just the provisos, just summarize. So here's paragraph JA, the one I just spoke of. 
So paragraph J A of the gross income definition says, remember, this is a special inclusion to the gross income definition. What does special inclusions mean? It means it must be included in gross income. It says, you must include any amount received by or accrued to any person during the year of assessment in respect of the disposal of any asset manufactured, produced, constructed, or assembled by that person, which is similar to any other asset manufactured, produced, or assembled by that person for purposes of manufacture, sale, or exchange by that per person or on that person's behalf. Okay, so what are they saying here? They say, if you make your own stock, so they say, that's why they say, if you have any other assets which you've manufactured, if you make your own stock, then what they say is, it will always be treated as trading stock, even if you don't use it as trading stock in reality. So for example, if a taxpayer manufactures computers as trading stock, and he takes one of those computers to use as a capital asset, then although it's no longer trading stock, you're using it as a capital asset, you will still treat it as trading stock. So you will still claim an opening stock deduction for it, and you will still include it in closing stock, using the same rules as always, lower cost of market value. And when you sell it one day, you will include it in gross income. So you will not include, you will not calculate CGT or a recoupment. Now, why is this important? Because if I use the same example and a company doesn't make their own computers, they buy computers from the manufacturer and then they sell it. If that company that doesn't make their own computers takes a computer from trading stock and then uses it as an asset, they will calculate a recoupment under Section 228. They will be treated as they sold it at market value and then they will claim wear and tear on that asset because they're not using it as a capital asset. This is exactly what we saw, or when we see also when we think about capital gains tax, when things move in and out of our CDT net. Right, it's the same situation there, where you will calculate it. All I want you to understand is if you make your own stock, you will always treat it as stock, even if you are not doing that in reality.